Hello people, this is Code Grind, and in today's video, we'll be creating a very simple yet very flexible and customizable image carousel. We will be using the Owl Carousel jQuery plugin for it. Believe me, it is really simple to make this one, and it has a lot of features to use. You can see uh, we have got this slider over here, which is an infinite slider. Uh, that means whenever it ends, it starts from the beginning again and it is draggable. It is touch draggable. We have got these navigation buttons. We have got these dots. We have got a lot of things to work with in this particular carousel. So let's get straight into it. So here I've got this basic layout ready. I have linked two external CSS files for the Owl Carousel plugin. So as I already told you, we will be using the jQuery Owl Carousel plugin. So for that, we definitely need some of the external files. So these are the two CSS files and these are the two JavaScript files which we need for it. We just need to link them and we don't need to get inside it at all. I will give a link in the description from where you can download these files and you don't need to do anything else. You can also go to the home website of this Owl Carousel and download these files from here. I will give a link in the description for this website as well. So now let's get started with the HTML part. First of all, we'll have a heading. So image carousel slash slider. Okay. So this is our heading over here. Now we need to integrate our carousel in here. So owl carousel. This is the class we need, which we need to provide the div with and another class is owl theme. So now whatever items we place inside this div will get uh, displayed as a part of the slider. So I've already downloaded uh, these few files. One, two, three, and all these I have named them one, two, three, four, up to seven dot jpg. I have downloaded it from unsplash.com which is a great website for downloading non-copyright uh, images of high resolution. I will give a link in the description for that website and you can go visit them and download images for your projects. So now we need is we need seven of them. So this is uh, known as emit abbreviations. These are actually short syntaxes for writing big HTML lines. I have already created a video on this topic. You can go watch the video. I will give the link in the description and you can also click on the link above. Now, as soon as I press enter, you see we have got uh, these seven image tags with one dot JPG, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Uh, there's a one mistake that I made. I've placed them inside the food folder. So food, yeah. And slash over here as well. Okay, so we have got them now as soon as I hit save. Now we don't see anything right now because we have placed them inside this. Uh, we need to provide them with some properties also. So now let's get started with our JavaScript. Now the JavaScript for this is a very, very simple thing. First, first of all, we need to select uh, the owl carousel, which is this one. Uh, we will place them inside this owl variable. So dollar dot owl carousel so we selected using jquery and now we will call a function using this owl variable owl dot owl carousel so this function is already defined in the owl carousel uh, this javascript file and now inside this we don't need to do anything we just need to go on providing different properties whatever properties we want to be integrated in our carousel so first, uh, first property which we will look into is the items property. So the items property is basically used for displaying how many items we want to be displayed at a particular amount of time. Let's say if I have two. So you see, uh, we get these two images displayed at a time. So at a time, only two images will be displayed. If I change it to four, then four images will be displayed. So let's keep it to three, which is also the default variable uh, value. Now, if I don't uh, have any property, let's say if I don't provide the items property, then by default, only three images will be displayed at a time. Now let's go to the CSS. Uh, I have already linked this index.css file over here. Just uh, we will just design the heading and the images. So select the heading, increase the font size to 2M, text align of center in the font family to poppins this is a font which i use a lot if you want to install it in your systems then i will give a link in the description from where you can download it and at last margin bottom of 2m okay so our heading is sorted out now to the images we will simply give them a border radius of 10 pixels okay this is it for the styling now let's uh, get into the second property 
which is the margin property so by default you see there is no margin between uh, the images now if you want uh, some margin to be provided then we can uh, have any number in this property let's say 10 this means 10 pixels I hit save and we've got this margin by default the value of this margin property is zero now the third property is loop so now right now you see when we come to the end of the carousel uh, this doesn't move forward that means it stops at the and we need to go back to the starting but if we want it to go on continuously that means if you want to make it an infinite slider so that whenever we reach the end it should start from the beginning again then we have this loop property for that we will just make it true and now you see we have got this infinite slider over here so the by default the value of this loop property is false so that we don't get an infinite slider because of that so the next property is the start position property now by default the start position that means the first image in the slider is this uh, first image only this one but if you want the slider to start with the second image then uh, it actually works as an array zero means the first image one means the second image two means the third image so if you want to start uh, the slider with this image so we will uh, have the start position as one which means the second image which is this one hit save and you see this image comes to the first so by default the value is zero that means the first image is displayed as the first image of the slider you can change it as whatever you want now another property which we will look into is the nav property so here we don't see the uh, back previous and the next buttons but if you want them you can simply uh, turn this nav to true hit save and here we have got these navigation buttons by default it is false so therefore they aren't displayed I also don't like to use them in this carousel you can also change the text uh, like by default uh, we have got these left and right arrows but if you want to change the text then nav text is the property and in here box bracket that means an array double quotes or my double quotes so this one is for previous you can change the text to previous and for this next hit save and we have got the text over here so you can provide a uh, unicode as well inside this array if you want uh, the navigation buttons I personally don't like them now the next one is dots so as you can see by default the dots are displayed so their value is true but if we don't want to display them then we can simply turn them to false and they won't be displayed but it's better to have them now the next one is dots each so right now you see we have got only three dots but we have got seven images but if you want uh, one dot for every image then dots each true and we will have one dot for every image so in this video i'll just be focusing on some of the important properties that are necessary for customization but there are a lot of properties which can customize which can help you in customizing this carousel you can go to this website i will give a link for this and you see there are a lot of properties in here you have got all the description of how to use these properties and what they do so you can visit this but uh, right now let's continue with the important ones next one is the autoplay so autoplay is a very important one uh, right now you see this autoplay is not working because it's set to false by default if I change it to true so by by default by every five seconds the autoplay will work so as you see after five seconds uh, the autoplay works and the images slide but if you want to change the time then there's a, there is another property for that autoplay timeout which works in milliseconds if I have it as thousand that means one second two thousand means two seconds so you can have any value in here as number I hit save so after every one second the slider slides now the next one is autoplay actually let's keep these two properties now the next one is autoplay hover pause so whenever I hover over it right now uh, let's remove this for now and now right now when you see this uh, image is auto playing this carousel is auto playing and when I hover it is still auto playing but if I provide it with a property auto play hover pause and make it true then whenever I hover over this carousel it will stop auto playing and when I remove my mouse from it it will start auto playing so by default its value is false but we can change it to true so this is all related to the auto play now the last property which we will talk about is the responsive which is a very necessary property to use it is an object in itself 
and in here we can specify different objects like let's see what I'm doing over here first let me write the code okay so now this means uh, whatever properties which we write inside this that means if we write let's say items 2 so whenever the size or the width of the window is between 0 to 600 then the number of items displayed will be 2 and we can also change uh, different properties you can change the margin inside it you can make it 5 and let's have another one 1000 and now inside here you can have that's 5 images and margin can be 20 and in here you can have 3 images and margin will be 10 So what this does is actually inside this responsive it acts as an object in itself and inside it we provide different objects again. So whenever the size or the width of the window is between 0 to 600 then these properties will be applied. Whenever the size of the window is between 600 and 1000 then these uh, properties will be applied and the when the width of the window is 1000 or more than 1000 then these properties will be applied so you can redefine any properties which you used here and you can place them inside here you can do all sorts of things when you're working with the responsive object so this is all about the owl carousel and i'll talked about a lot of properties i'll give a link in the description uh, from where you can download the source code for this and if you like the video then don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more such amazing tutorials on css and javascript and thank you for watching